Good morning. Welcome to Schofield Bible Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike Mackey. We continue our study about in Christ truth. Uh, and maybe to begin with, let's turn. Well, let's pray first and then we'll get it. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to study your word and looking uh, forward to, to seeing things from your point of view. We help us, uh, Father, to uh, focus on how you look at it for our betterment, uh, because that gives us healthy thinking directed for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, turn in my participation screen. No, there we go. Interesting. There we go. Screen is a little crowded here. All right. First Corinthians chapter 12. And this is uh important uh, portion of scripture because this is critical in in, in defining uh, our relationship to the Holy Spirit in, re in reference to the baptism work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the word baptism means placed into. The Apostle Paul, by the Spirit's direction, uh, uses the illustration of the body, the human body. Verse 12, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. An interesting usage of the, the word Christ here. Uh, there's a definite article before the word Christ. And it's t talking about our relationship to the to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the head, and we're the body. Verse tw uh, thirteen: For by one Spirit we were all baptized, placed into one body, whether we were Jew or a Greek, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. And that's pointing to regeneration. So the regenerating work of the Spirit gets us into the body. When we believe the gospel, when we place our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us, and that he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In that point in time, we are also at the same time baptized placed into the body of Christ, and we're connected. And there's many blessings, many uh, important principles that, that are activated at that point in time. And I want us to be mentally aware of them. And so we're going through in Christ truth. And we're looking at the ones that are where it uses the word together with. That we're we are together as a body, but we're also together with the head. So we're together together. And uh, so we're one in him. Verse 
we will spend eternity together, we'll be unified perfectly. Uh, there will be no misunderstandings anymore. We are on the same frequency, harmony in the body of Christ. That is not true today, unfortunately. Even in the same assembly of believers, there's a lot of things that we're, uh, we're lacking in areas. And God wants us to grow in these areas. And so that's, as a pastor, I recognize this. And uh, I, I want to uh, inform us as to what we should re be reflecting on. And uh, let's go to our notes. Oh, change glasses. Um. All right. All righty. And we're on page eleven. All right. And maybe we'll look at last week's notes here. I reviewed things, things. Uh We'll come back to it if we have to. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. The Apostle Paul is explaining grace. God's undeserved favor showered upon us. He made us alive together with Christ. We looked at that last week. And that what logically follows is that that we are once we are alive, he wants us to uh, be resurrected. And in verse six it points that out and raised us up together. And then next week, we'll look at made us sit together. And this is the only place in the New Testament where that phrase is, is used. Uh, uh, there's no, no mention of the ascension, but in order for you to be seated in the heavenly, of course, it had to be an ascension. So we uh, are in the heavenlies. In Christ Jesus. And I'm hoping that when you see the form, the in Christ Jesus, uh, that that is what your your mind goes to is in Christ truth, and you're looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to go to Ephesians two in a second. Raised us up together with Christ. It is true we were crucified together with Christ. We were crucified together. So the crucifixion is when what happened? What was happening during Christ's crucifixion? He was dying for the sins of the world. What kind of death was he dying? Spiritual death. He was being separated from the Father. He cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he was forsaken for us. He took our place. 
And when without the work of crucifixion, Christ uh, facing our spiritual death of separation from the Father, the, the world would be still having the sin issue. There would be no solution to sin. The whole human race would be destined for the lake of fire. Number two, we died together with Christ. Die, to die is finality. It, it's final. It's the end. So he didn't, he only was on the cross for three hours. He didn't, he's not still on the cross. You might uh, get the impression from uh, often seeing the pictures of our Christ that he's still on the cross. But now that's a done deal. His, and he wants us to move on from that. He, we died together with him by his completing the payments for sin. And we died with him positionally. He died and we died with him. Number three, we were buried. What's interested in this interesting in this word, we were united together with his burial. And, and this is important in the gospel for Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15. The, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins and was buried. What's interesting in the in the Greek uh, side of it, the words that are used, it has the idea of planted that growth may take place. It's like a garden. It's it's a food plot. <laughs> it's a an area that now that is meant to grow. And so God wants us to look beyond crucifixion, look beyond dying with Christ, and go on to be, uh, realize you and have the ability to grow together with Christ in the likeness of his death. So we can apply that we are spiritually, our spiritual death uh, was taken care of. We can agree with God that that it, process is done with and that we were buried together with Christ. And then number four, we were made alive together with Christ. And that's to live out the Spirit's filling work that he wants to control us. So that's what the planting is about. It's for the pur purpose of uh, Christian production of the fruits of the Spirit. And today we're looking at number five. We were raised together we were raised up together in Christ. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's see. He puts all those wonderful things together in that same portion, and it's good to look at that context. Ephesians chapter 2. We'll start with verse 1. And you he has made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. So he contrasts that with what it was be, what we were before. in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, 
the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves, every one of us were under that system of Satan, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, we don't uh, battle flesh and blood. He sees and tells us in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. But we, but principalities and powers and and there there is there is evil thinking that uh, Satan loves to perpetrate against our minds, where we doubt God. He doesn't want us to have that harmony with God. And so I, I hope you might just really pay attention here to this in Christ truth, because this is what God is saying to us. You are seated in the heavenlies. And God, and God looks at us, not here, but there. He says, I want you to realize that you are seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. You've gone through the whole process with Christ, and therefore you get the benefits of being in Christ. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, we didn't have to get better to get God's good works done toward us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. <clears throat> Verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The baptism work of the Holy Spirit puts us there. That in the ages to come, so what's the age after this one in which we live? Yeah, the millennium's the next age. That's one. But it says ages. All right. So what does that take in? The times of the new heaven and the new earth. And this will be according to what this verse of scripture, he will show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Oh, he's going to review in Christ truth. It's going to be God teaching it. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Back to our notes. <laughs> Raised up together. We are now living out being 
made alive together with Christ. We practice this truth actually when we are being spiritual. That's what we covered last week. In that, in that um, living together with Christ, uh, we are looking at an, an object. We're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, let's go. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so, uh, so great a cloud of witnesses. And that's really important for us to remember that all the Old Testament saints are, are aware of what's going on. The chapter 11 talks about the Old Testament saints. And so they're, they're keeping an update on what's, uh, how we're doing spiritually. So they understand what the, what the church is about. And they are rejoicing with us when we're victorious and walking in the spirit. And we and they are saddened by as the spirit of God is grieved when we're not. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And we all have our pet problems. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse 2. Looking, our focus is looking unto Jesus because he has provided in Christ truth that has gotten us to the point we're at right now. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our convictions, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he's at the final stage. We'll be looking at next week, and that and we are sitting there with him in the at the Father's right hand and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, because we are strengthened by our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. The objectives and the goals that we set in our daily activities uh, need to be including convictions that we've we've gotten from the Lord Jesus Christ, from what he did for us. Promises that we can claim now that we didn't have before. He did it for us. It's the work of God. We were saved by the work of God. He worked for us. He sent his son. The father sent the son to do the work of salvation. And we need to apply the work of God to our lives. That's what 
And that's what's encouraging to God. And that is a joy to God when we do that. That's complementing his grace. Verse 3, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. He didn't give up. And we have the Holy Spirit provided us so that we don't need to give up and succumb to the, the uh, attacks against us that can cause us to be weary and discouraged. You have not yet resisted to blood, bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening. And the chastening is the uh, child training. Uh, he is trying to cause us to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18 my son, do not despise it, the child training of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked of him, when he points something out that you failed in. For whom the Lord loves, he child trains and scourges every son whom receives. He receives. He wants to encourage us, and he will use circumstances to bring the us around. And he wants us to be rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he will bring us to the right destination. He will take us through the process. Let's go back to our notes. Under point A, we are discouraged, or we are, excuse me, encouraged. Um, not discouraged, no. excuse me. We are encouraged to focus on the next logical positional truth that the Father raised us up together in Christ. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 3. Let's turn there. We got to hear what he has to say. And I like to give the context when we do it. Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 1. And I'll point this out at the end of the message, the grammar here. The, the the word if is in is what is called in the Greek grammar the fulfilled condition. And so you could translate it since since you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. where Christ is at the right hand of God. So we should follow that mentally, our, this whole process of being crucified with Christ, dying with Christ, buried with Christ, alive with Christ, 
raised with Christ, seated with Christ, that in Christ you have been given the greatest position that any creature has ever received. We are going to be on display during the times of the, of the new heavens and the new earth as grace will be taught by the Father and we will be the object lesson. <laughs> that's pretty strange. And that's why I want you to know these things. Because we're going to have one day be enjoying it on a higher level. So he says, set your mind. What you should do about it. Set your mind on things above where you're going to be sending, spending eternity with God, not on things on the earth. Yes, you have to deal with things on the earth, but your, the, that should be in the context of setting your mind on things above. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also with, will appear with him in glory. That's our future. That's reality. This is just a short, brief period of time that we're spending here on this planet compared to eternity. Wouldn't you want to be gleaning eternal benefits? Things that last throughout eternity or things, or do you want to spend your time on stuff that is burned up at the judgment seat of Christ. It's rubbish. It's worthless. Would he stumble? That's the challenge here. Set your mind on things above, not on things in the earth. For you died with Christ, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's another in Christ truth, by the way. We'll look at it down the road. Uh, back to the notes. So, under capital A, we have some small A. A small a, b, c, and d. So positionally, the Father sees us as participating in resurrection. We haven't done it actually physically yet. But in the Father's mind, it's a done deal. And he views us seated. So when we pray, think about that. When we're praying, we're praying from the right hand of the Father to the Father. Positioning the Father sees us as participating in resurrection. Positionally, we are to claim this truth for spiritual victory over our enemies. See, our desire should be to know him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. 
the Apostle Paul claims that. Oh, let's go and look at that one too. That's a good one. Philippians chapter 3. This, the, uh, um, the Apostle Paul kind of uh, starts um, chapter three, first uh, uh, chapter three of Philippians, verse one. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. And he warns them for me to write the same things to you is not tedious. So I, I keep on repeating myself and said, well, Pastor, you had covered that once before. Just wait, I'll cover it again. Yes. But if for you, it is safe. It, it's for your safety I do it. Paul said, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who, who worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. We rejoice in our position and have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 4, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he might have confidence in the flesh, I am more, more so. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and they were a faithful tribe. Uh, they were warriors, uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, Concerning the righteousness of the law, blameless. So I was, the Apostle Paul is saying, I was the, the head of my class in being loyal to Judaism. But I was wrong. <laughs> but I was wrong. But what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. For indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. My getting to know him is the most important thing, knowing my head, knowing in Christ's truth what he went to the cross to pay for so I could have these resources to mentally work them out when I'm having attacks against me for my spiritual enemies, that I would stay encouraged running the race that's set before me, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish, Count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God. It's not from us. It's from God. And how do I get it? By faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ's work for me. God doing his work. 
verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to suffer right. I want to, if I'm going to get into trouble over something, I want to get under uh, in trouble for the right reason. Being conformed to his death. So the very things that, the thoughts that in, uh, cause our Lord Jesus Christ to uh, serve him, the Heavenly Father, so we can have that same mindset and uh, look to the promises that are made to us and uh, walk by faith and not by sight. Verse 12. Well, verse 11, I think I missed out there. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, I want to be resurrected right. I want my mind to be embracing resurrection truth. Not that I am, not that I've already attained or I'm already per perfected. I'm not claiming sinless perfection. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. He has a purpose for my life. I want to fulfill that purpose. And so there is uh, an important process you go through, and he lays this out. Oh, we can lay awake at night reviewing our past failures. <laughs> but what he wants us to do is cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. That's the past. I need to live the now. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting, forgetting, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There it is again. In Christ Jesus. He calls me to be heavenly minded. And I want to do it, Paul said, and so should we. So verse 15, therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you th think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. God's the teacher, the ultimate teacher. All right. Back to our notes. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. D, the being raised up together will become an actual physical experience at the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. Uh, 
contains the reference to the rapture. Uh, the term rapture actually comes from the Latin translation. So it's just, it's just a step away uh, from the Greek. And uh, the more literal translation is caught up. But we that was picked up somewhere along the line, and I don't know why. Um, but what but it's this word caught up in verse 17 that we need to look at. Let's go through this. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, the resurrection of the uh, dead ones physically will be there, get their glorified bodies rised, risen. Verse 17, then we who are alive still, and so the apostle Paul was hoping for the rapture in his day, He's, and we, he's, the church has been waiting a long time for that to happen, but it will happen on God's appointed day. Then we who are alive and remain physically alive shall be caught up, raptured together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking for what? For the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That would be at the rapture. That's what we're looking forward is our resurrection. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Page 12. First John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it is has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Uh, we don't have all the details uh, concerning our future, but we know that when, when he is revealed, we shall be like him. We'll have the same kind of resurrection, re resurrected, erection, resurrection body uh, that he has for we shall see him as he is. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me Though he may die physically, he shall live, he shall be resurrected. And whosoever lives physically and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So Jesus was reminding Martha just 
before uh, Lazarus resuscitation took place to be thinking about resurrection life. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. Behold, I tell you a mystery, a secret now being revealed. We shall not all sleep. That's been making reference to the body being uh, dead. And in the, uh, but awaiting the resurrection. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we look forward to the resurrection. Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. B, the working of God. Working, energia, is the energy that the Father displayed in resurrection. The Father energized Jesus Christ resurrection because he, his sacrifice on the cross satisfied God, the Father's righteous demands. Eternal life was for those believing in the work of God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit's I messed up a sentence here, sorry. Anyway, the resurrection life for those for that believe in the work of God. Tried to fix that sentence and I made a mess of it, sorry. But two things are happening here. One is eternal life. One is resurrection life. Our response to the gospel in regeneration, regeneration, being born again, gives us eternal life. That's what Jesus was emphasizing in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life, says everlasting in your 
English version, but it's actually the word eternal. Eternal life. And it, I, so regeneration provided us eternal life. But the baptism work of the Holy Spirit, uh, we receive Christ's resurrection life for those that believe in the work of God. So it's God's work that does the the does the work. He accomplished it completely. See, raised with him through faith in the working of God. Faith is effective when it has a correct object. The object of faith is the energy of God, his work for us. D, who the Father raised him, Christ, from the dead. The same energy of God for Jesus Christ's resurrection provided for our resurrection. So just as he was resurrected, so we will be resurrected with the same work of God. And in closing, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with him, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting right now, and you're sitting there with him at the right hand of God. The Greek text has A, the particle of a fulfilled condition, followed by the indicative mode. And the indicative means it is true. It is in view of the fact, therefore, you were raised with Christ. It's a fact. It's not a question mark. It's not just a possibility. It's a truth. It's real. It's what we look forward to. It's the goal, the objective that he would have us have. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this study. We thank you for resurrection. And may our hearts just rest upon these thoughts and rejoice in our resurrection resurrection life that you want us to live out with this objective in view. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Running this race that's in front of us with, the, with this goal in mind, what Jesus Christ paid for. He prayed for me to be resurrected, to bring glory to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.